Roger, one of the things that I think we should be catching up on is the comment by the by the um, um, Italian Deputy Prime Minister. If today we still have people leaving Africa, it is due to several European countries, France above all, who has never stopped colonizing African countries. France is printing a currency of its own in dozens of African countries, and with that currency, French debt is financed. If France didn't have African colonies, it would be the 15th world economic power. Instead, it's among the leading ones. I stopped being hypocritical by talking just about the effect and I decided to start talking about the causes. The European Union should sanction all those countries, like France, that are impoverishing African countries and obliging those people to leave. The place for African people is Africa, and not at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. He is echoing exactly some of the things that we have said. We have explored in detail the cooperation agreement, and what he was actually discussing was one aspect of that cooperation agreement, which is the monetary part. Yes. And he was very, very right on the money. Now, how many other parts are still remaining that he did not touch? You know, he did not touch the uh, political, he did not touch the economic, he did not touch the education. He did not touch the military. He did not touch the military. He did not touch the power of the uh, uh, French ambassador to invite uh, French troops. So there are about five other controls that he did not touch. Yes. So he just took this part of the cooperation agreement and discussed it and he was very right that if africa was not there france would be nowhere and that is why france is doing everything to kill in africa in order to be able to stay in africa so he was right i mean uh, some pundits came and described it as some kind of uh, local politics but it, it was probably local politics but the underlying thing he was discussing is that instead of accepting her responsibility, because the reason those people are moving from Africa is because of the policies of France, what France is doing in, in Africa is the push factor that is pushing these people out of Africa and they end up in the bottom of the ocean, as he said, or they end up in the Italian shores and the Italian people have to deal with it. They are not the cause of the problem, but they are trying to fix it and the country that is responsible for it is not even participating in trying to help to solve the problem. So he was absolutely right. Yes, yes. I, I really want to thank the, uh, the, the, the Italian Deputy Prime Minister for, for bringing out the issue. Uh, and I don't, do you even care whether it was brought up as part of a local politics or European, lo uh, European politics or, or anything like that? I mean, the truth has to be told. And, and he told the truth. Um, uh, but I think one of the questions that people will keep asking is how does France manage to do this in the 21st century and continue to do it without opposition like you just said? Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that, uh, that people should know is that France does this by force, by actually enforcing... Um, enforcing to make sure this policy stays just the same as the Nazis were doing in the during during Second World War, because all the presidents in Africa, in Francophone Africa, where these currencies are are, are, are instituted and managed, are put there by the French. Cameroon, which later became a big oil producer, achieved independence in 1960 and was facing its first election. France's former ambassador in Gabon was called into action. Quand on a commencé à vouloir faire voter les Africains, il fallait quand même trouver des leaders pour se présenter. C'est-à-dire des gens qui sachent au minimum lire et écrire et qui ont un petit peu de formation. Et Elio avait été repéré comme un garçon euh, pas mal, intelligent, ouvert et désireux de progresser. Et donc, c'est on peut dire que c'est l'administration coloniale qui a mis Elio en avant. Et à partir de ce moment-là, évidemment, on nous a fait demander de tout mettre en œuvre pour que Elio soit élu. Il a été élu. Oh, <laughs> 
In Cameroon, the French supported the fragile power of President Amadou Aijo. The opposition UPC, or Union of the Peoples of Cameroon, was banned during the French colonial era because of its Marxist ideology. With growing support, UPC leader Félix Moumier was clearly becoming more than an annoyance to France. Moumier, je le connaissais bien, il était médecin, pas de problème avec lui. Il a même choisi mon fils. Et puis après, il a évolué de manière différente. Moumier traveled to Geneva, allegedly to buy weapons. There, he met a man calling himself William Bechtel, who claimed to be a journalist. Bechtel was reportedly a member of the French Secret Service. After the meeting, Félix Moumier collapsed and died. Swiss police determined that he'd been poisoned with thallium in his coffee. Delaunay does not mention his name, but admits French involvement. C'est quelqu'un qui avait été payé par le président Aïdjo, mais avec notre accord, évidemment. Nous-mêmes, nous étions très hostiles à, à Moumier, qui était violemment anti-français. Vous dites « avec notre accord ». Est-ce que ça signifie que la France peut être complice d'un homicide Qu'en pensez-vous du passé de la France Qu'en pensez-vous de Richelieu <rire> hein Il y a des moments, vous voyez, si vous voulez, où la politique passe au, avant la morale, hein, à mon avis. The executors of France's Africa policy followed a simple rule under de Gaulle. Memoir of Maurice Robert. The general rarely explicitly approved such operations, but he didn't say no either. One of the things that the Italian deputy prime minister did not say is, is, is give the history of this currency. Mm -hmm. The history of this CFA franc was, uh, has its origin from Nazi Germany. And I have uh, one of our contributors uh, on this channel, uh, and I'll have him give us a little bit, a bit of history on, on how the French came to know how to, how to do these things so well in Africa and how to keep them stay. When Germany occupied and installed the Vichy regime in France, they moved swiftly to rebrand the French state. The French national motto of liberty, equality, fraternity was replaced with work, family, fatherland. The German National Socialists were making a statement of intent, a statement of what occupied of Vichy France will represent to Germany. How viciously ironic that France now manages her African possessions such as the Republic of Cameroon, no different from how the German National Socialists managed occupied France. And in the case of the Republic of Cameroon, with an eerily familiar motto of peace, work, fatherland. Notice the subtlety. They updated the motto imposed on them by the Germans simply by replacing the word family with peace, and so branded the slave state of La République du Cameroon of 1st January 1960. This motto this symbol or branding reflects the essence of an evil ideology that the world thought had been vanquished in 1945 in order to usher a new era for humanity. This evil ideology is thoroughly expressed in the management of the Republic of Cameroon and by extension Ambazonia by France. This is being accomplished through cooperation agreements signed between Yaoundé and Paris and facilitated by a slave currency called the CFA. It is known as the Pacte Colonial in French or Colonial Agreement. It is an arrangement that keeps France as the last colonialist on the African continent today. Naturally, 
Ambazonia's long-standing discomfort and resentment of the pact colonial has entered the stage of active rejection. Ambazonia's rebellion constitutes a natural reaction to the dehumanizing colonial agreement that binds the French African Empire with an ideology that emanates from one of humanity's darkest periods, that of the expansionist German National Socialists. Recently, French colonial control of Africa has been in the news largely because of its denunciation by Italian officials. However, what the Eurocentric coverage of this soon-to-be-forgotten skirmish has failed to consider is the actual origins of the policy the Italians are rightly denouncing. According to Dr. Christoph Lehmann, a German psychologist and the founder and editor of NSNBC, he wrote, and I quote, On the 9th of May, 1941, Hemen, the German ambassador to France, declared that he had signed a treaty with the French Admiral Dallan. The treaty would place German commissars within the French National Bank's departments for foreign currencies and international commerce. The treaty was negotiated under the auspices of German Minister of Finance, Hermann Göring, whose father, Heinrich Ernst Göring, had been the German governor of German West Africa, today's Namibia, from 1885 to 1890. Hermann Göring was, among other things, notorious for his plundering the occupied nation's economies through operations accounts and for his special interest in treasures and art from the German occupied areas. At the end of World War II and the occupation of France, then French President Charles de Gaulle created the CFA franc as a currency for the Western African colonies. De Gaulle created a monetary union whose functions of control were based on the model Germany had used to use sub-German occupied France. End of quote. World War II ended on September 2nd, 1945. The CFA franc was created on December 26th, 1945. It's been 74 years and counting. This vestige of Nazi Germany that has been allowed to take root and prosper in Africa must come to an end. France has not completed uh, its decolonization process it had left African countries, but while maintaining behind it a new colonial system, processes that allows it to take advantage of those countries, hapless countries, and not giving them a chance to freely decide on their fate, whether on monetary issues or even on geopolitical alignment or a inter internal political management, France is still mingling with those countries' fate. They decide on the outcome of elections. They maintain who they want to be their stooge, and they manage to ensure that their companies, their enterprises, the likes of Total, the likes of uh, Buigs and others, come into those countries and take over the, the contracts, public contracts, while uh, their leaders have to always uh, seek advice from France. For instance, every time there is in Washington uh, this uh, meeting of the IMF World Bank, uh, either in April or in September, the French African ministers, Francophone ministers, have to come through Paris to talk to the French Minister of Finance to coordinate their uh, positions. So this is neocolonialism. This is actually colonization, and this is okay. hampering the development of these countries. You know, too, that one of the pundits on Al Jazeera said that any African country can get out of that currency. 
Uh, the CFA has 14 countries. Anyone can leave anytime they want, but they don't want to leave because they have some benefits. No, he, I, I don't think he understands. No, but remember, he is a French man. So they can come and say, oh, no, it is, there is nothing about it. If you want to get out of it, you can get out of it. Seko Toure did not get out of it. Seko Toure, I was going to say, Seko Toure did not get out of it. And when Seko Toure tried, they, create, they created fake currencies to, 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 to damage his uh, economy. Yes. They went and created rebels. And I mean, the man could not sleep. Often by the French Secret Service. Robert turned to counterfeiting money in his attempt to destabilize Guinea. The country had refused to accept the currency France had assigned to its former African colonies, the CFA franc. La Guinée a quitté la zone franc en mars 1960 et a créé donc le franc guinéen. Et les services spéciaux français ont fait imprimer des faux francs guinéens qu'ils ont euh, déversés euh, sur euh, le, le sol guinéen, je ne sais pas par quel canal, pour euh, déstabiliser la, la monnaie guinéenne. Mémoire de Maurice Robert. This operation was a real success, and the Guinean economy, already in a bad state, struggled to recover. We had to destabilize Sekoutouré, make him vulnerable and unpopular, to help the opposition take over. But France feared this operation wouldn't be enough to defeat Sekoutouré, even if it succeeded in ruining the Guinean economy. We armed and trained the Guinean opposition to create a climate of insecurity and, if possible, to overthrow Sekou Touré. L'opération n'a pas marché parce qu'elle a été décelée à l'avance par Sekou Touré et par conséquent, elle a été démontée. Quel était le but précis de l'opération Ah, ben, dans, dans l'esprit de Focard, c'était de faire sauter Sekou Touré. Yes, they undermined uh, uh, his country. They created those fake currencies, dumped it, devalued everything in the economy and destroyed it before they could leave. So no, nobody, we have, as a people, have to stand up to this demon. In fact, let me just cut you short. In fact, one of the reasons why the French were very instrumental in making sure that uh, Muammar Gaddafi of Libya is gone was because Gaddafi was, what actually had the power to, to get that currency out and there was a plan to do that. And, um, and that's why the French were very, very instrumental in making sure that Gaddafi is gone. On that same Al Jazeera show that you're talking about, there was an Italian journalist who actually came and gave us a sense of a, of a European conspiracy. And this is what he said. He said, he said, uh, um, to voice an opinion about post-colonial ties is clearly out of place. Now, this, this is commentary. This is, a, this is an Italian journalist making a commentary about what their own deputy prime minister is saying. And, he's, and he was saying this in order to justify that, oh, it, it's, it's, really, it's really about local politics. Uh, to voice an opinion on uh, decolonization uh, for a country that clearly has had, uh, I mean, a colonial past as well, clearly not as developed as France, but we colonized Libya, we colonized Ethiopia, we colonized Eritrea and Somalia. And uh, so to voice an opinion about, uh, let's say, post-colonial ties is clearly out of place. And this uh, is uh, clearly a response to the fact that each, uh, 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 each uh, politician in Italy is trying to use France and the political debate there to uh, simply you know, uh, advance their own position for the European elections. Mm -hmm. He's not really trying to challenge the French in Africa or anything like that. Well, uh, that, that view to me was short-sighted. And it was short-sighted for this reason. The Italian deputy prime minister, as the leader of the government, was addressing a problem that Italy is currently facing, and it's a problem of migration. It is impacting the quality of life of the Italians. It is depleting its resources. So the Italian government had the right to address that. And he did not want to address 
just the issue of people being rescued or people dying in the high seas. He actually said he wanted to go to the root cause. Yes, he went to the root cause of the problem. Because yes. remember, if you are trying to solve a problem and you don't go to the root cause of the problem, what you are doing is you are giving a temporal fix. You are giving a you, you are putting a bandage to to a, 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 a deep scar on your hand. Yes. And that bandage is going to rip off and you'll be back to where you started. And it'll be worse. It will be, so he was going to the root cause. The root cause of the problem of people dying in the high seas or ending up in the Italian shores is that France is impoverishing the African countries and the Africans are fleeing for their lives. Yes, and, and I'm, I'm, re I'm really glad you brought that up because even if there is that conspiracy and, uh, and they agree to like do what you want with your, with your former slaves, but once... They, they do what you want with your, own, with your former slaves, start affecting them negatively, then they'll try to address it, and that's, yes. and that's, it, and that's what you just addressed. Yes. But I'm going to bring you another thing. Uh, in a, you know, the Italian Prime Minister is not the first to have brought this up. In, uh, in, in 2002, Claire Shorts, who was the, the former Secretary of State for International Development under Tony Blair's government, Mm -hmm. Also came and said the same thing, and I'm going to, you know, it was published by um, by the Telegraph, uh, February 11, 2002. Uh, the International Development Secretary broke ranks with the labor, with her labor colleagues by singling out the French as one of the obstacles to Africa's economic development. Her remarks made as she toured West Africa with the Prime Minister reflects what the government believes in private but has refused to say in public. As he went off for London yesterday, Mr. Blair said, I don't want to get into a dispute with France. So everybody knows what the French are doing in Africa, uh, and, and they're playing games with it, but I guess the Italians could not really play games with it because it was really affecting their economy. Yeah, I mean, you are talking about 2002. This is, uh, that, this is almost 17 years now. So I think the dynamic has changed quite a bit. And uh, it is interesting that this was written on the 11th of, of February, 2002. And you guys all know the significance of that day to us. So yes, this problem has been there. And that is why it has been discussed. And Tony Blair said he didn't want to get into any dispute with France. But this guy has opened the door. That is what I said. He has opened the door for us or the uh, France Afrique citizens to walk through that door to freedom. He has opened the door. So this is a time for all those people who are in France, who, who are in Belgium, to go down to the European Parliament and seize this opportunity that the Deputy Italian Prime Minister has given to them. They should not be going on uh, the various uh, uh, public transport system in France and lecturing the French people about what uh, their government is doing in Africa, because we have seen those videos. Yes. What they should do is to follow that deputy prime minister and go to the European Parliament and ask the European Parliament to do something about what France is doing. They should not be drawing up immigration policies and apportioning this quarter or this quarter to this country. There are people who are stuck at the borders of uh, the other Eastern European countries yes. who are not being allowed to come through. Yes. And they are sitting there and suffering there and dying in those camps. So the European government, the European parliament should be addressing policies that take on France so that France can give all those foreign reserves, those foreign reserves that she is holding, that these African countries have to come back and borrow from her and pay interest on it to be able to help their people. Yes, and the Africans did uh, contribute in, uh, in, in freeing Europe from Nazi Germany. And basically what the French did, they basically took the blueprint of, of, of the Nazis and implemented it in Africa. And that is what is causing problems in Africa. Africans are very hardworking. They're very smart people. They are, they are, their lands are very rich, but they have been refused, refused to use their human uh, abilities to help themselves. And you know what, pa? after all of that is done, then they sit back and laugh at Africans. Yes, and this is and just based on what you just said. You know, Martin Luther King once said, 
if you do not bend your back nobody will be able to read to write on your back you gonna understand the meaning yes if you don't bend your back nobody can stand on your back nobody can write on your back so this italian deputy prime minister has opened the door for these africans to now stand up so that france cannot write on their backs anymore yes and it is up to them now to take it and run with it and and it's not only up i think your appeal is to the citizens yes but i think the the african heads of government if not the francophone government because those are agents of france who have been put there to rule no i don't they, know why you always go to this african government because these people are as you said they are agents they are instruments and they are benefiting from the system their families are benefiting from it their their their, their cronies are benefiting from it they are funny musongas and all these touches or the, the billionaires or hired hands that you call up those are the people benefiting from it and they are not going to change it so that is why i always go back to the people remember uh, Blaise Compare mm -hmm. wanted to go to Parliament and change the constitution so that he could run for another term of office. Like Paul Biya did and he's running and What forever. did the people do? They, they, they came out. They said no. Yes. And that is why I always, because the people have the power. Togo started something, they have to continue it. Other countries, Cote d'Ivoire, they have to continue it. The people need to rise up. Whether it, forget about party elections. This, there is no party politicking in this particular business. Because no matter which party you bring in or which candidate you bring in, as long as these policies are in place, these cooperation agreements are in place, nothing will change. Yes, yes. The music will change, but the dancers will be the same. Yes. Or the dancers will change, but the music will be the same. Well, where, I was, where I was going with the African governments was not to ask <coughs> the, the agents running these plantations in Africa to be the ones, to be the agents of change. No. You know, there are African governments that are not part of the CFA Frank and that are truly independent. Mm -hmm. Those are the people, and they meet at the AU. And those are the people I'm appealing to. Have you heard any of them come out like the, like, like the Italian Prime Minister did? Deputy Prime Minister? Have you heard any other African leader come out and say, Yes, what the French are doing in Africa is wrong and we should find a way to stop it. Have you heard any of them? No. So what are the Kenyans doing? What's the, what, what's the president or the prime minister of, of, of other free African countries doing? Why is Nigeria not talking about it? Why is Ghana not talking about it? Why is uh, uh, South Africa, why are they not coming out and talking about it? Because I can tell you something. Until all of Africa is free, no African country will be free. Yeah, and uh, I think there was a discussion on that Al Jazeera by the Senegalese uh, uh, panel, panelist mm -hmm. who said that this is actually what is preventing uh, a, a united currency for Africa. Yes, and regional, and regional groupings. And regional groupings. It's, it's, uh, it's all well and good to say that there are some advantages of the CFA as a single bloc for the 14 or 15 francophone countries. But this is in opposition on the one hand, to the African countries being involved in regional integration that this gentleman was talking earlier about. Because under ECOWAS and under the African Union, they want to put in place African currencies, continental ones, starting with regional currencies at the level of ECOWAS, for instance, to talk of West African countries. How can you maintain the CFA franc when you strive to build a regional currency in West Africa. This is against the will of the Francophone and overall West African countries. Secondly, it prevents these countries from having, at the end of the day, an access to this key monetary policy that is essential in economic management. So you, you, you are right. Uh, I think they, they need to be able to stand up and it is all this thing that people say, oh, uh, this is an internal matter. This, I don't want to get involved in this. You know, we are all humans. Uh, like John Donne said, you know, what affects you affects me. But let me say something, though. You see, when the Europeans have intervened in each other's economy and cleaned them up, now they, they start talking about internal matters. If you've done European history, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, know, you remember how uh, European countries used to go and fight evil in each other's country? Mm -hmm. that's, how they, that's how they clean Europe. 
And then they transferred technology from each other. They shared all these, they shared all of these things, clean up Europe, and then they come now and say, oh, in, internal matters. You know, and that's why you see Paul Bia and the French are killing Ambazonians with impunity because the Ambazonians are, uh, are fighting against the same thing we've been talking about.